Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. My name is Audra and this review lesson is on chapter 4, part 2, Arrangements of Electrons and Atoms. We're going to need to hustle and move through this one pretty quickly because there's a lot to cover. To start off, quantum theory states two things that are very important. One, that electrons exist at specific energy levels, which are called orbitals. And two, that electrons can jump from one energy level to another. Now also as far as quantum theory goes, there are four quantum numbers we need to talk about. I'm sorry for my handwriting. The first one is principle. The second one is angular momentum. Third one, magnetic. Yep. And four, spin. Their symbols are going to be here. They're going to be described and the integers that they can be. The symbol for principle is n. Angular momentum is a cursive or italicized l. Magnetic, lowercase m, and spin, a lowercase s. Now, the principle quantum number describes the energy orbital of an electron. The angular momentum describes the shape of the orbital. Magnetic number describes the size of the orbital. And the spin number describes the spin of the electron. Now the integers that these can take on the principle is all positive integers. Angular momentum can be anything zero and forward, basically, it is whatever n's value is, minus one. Magnetic can be from negative l all the way up to positive l. And the spin of the electron is either positive one half or negative one half. All this means is as far as the orbital goes, there's one orbital, two orbital, which is all going to be n equals 1, 2, 3. L is whatever that number is, minus 1. The magnetic, it depends on whatever goes on that. We didn't spend a lot of time on that one. And the spin is which direction the um, electron is spinning, which we'll talk about when we go over the orbital energy level diagram. To keep freezing through, we're also going to need to talk about the number of shapes that are available, as well as what some of the letters actually stand for. For the value of n equals, here's what l can possibly equal. If n is equal to 1, l can only be equal to 0. It's the only value possible. If n is equal to 2, l can be either 0 or 1. If n is 3, it can be 0, 1, or 2. If it's 4, it can be 0, 1, 2, 3. See the pattern? And for what L equals, here's what it actually, the letter that it stands for, which will be each of the different types of orbitals. For L value of 0, it's the S sublevel. For L1, it's the P sublevel. L value of 2, it's the D sublevel. 3, the F sublevel. 4, G and 5 is h, though in a lot of the problems we do in class we don't generally get past 3. Sometimes we go into 4, sometimes we go in 5, but we don't usually go into 6 or 7, which is why they are not listed on my table. Now s stands for strong, p, once again we're back to principle, d is diffuse, and f is fine. But that is less important than what their corresponding number value is. Now I already have my graph started because I wanted to take as little time doing that as possible. So let me just pull that up. It looks like this. Now I already have it filled out, so I'll just briefly explain what this is. My sublevels are listed here across the bottom. You have your S sublevel, which is the L value of zero, P value of one, D value of two. And then over here we have energy, where N equals one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. So for the S sublevel, there is one here. You can have an electron going in either this direction or this direction. This would probably be a positive spin value. This one over here would be a positive one half. This one would be a negative one half, just to tie it back to um, the spin that we briefly talked about and I said we'd explain. But pretty much, electrons have two possible options for spin and pair up in energy levels. Now, as far as pairing goes, it is important to talk about Hund's rule once we get up into the P and D sublevels, but quickly we're just going to go through the S, where you would also, for 1S, since it's the next energy level, would have, just for this example, let's say it goes ahead and pairs up. 
And what we do need to talk about is something called Hund's rule. This states that electrons must fill up orbitals before pairing up to make the electron level more stable. So basically, if they're going to be four in this P sublevel, four electrons, they have to go in this order. They fill up all three sublevels, and then one of them pairs up before they continue to keep going. I have the D, di D diagram drawn out with all five, the P with all three, and the S with just one, just for a brief description of what these look like before we keep going. In order to actually write these out, you have to talk about something called Aufbau's principle, which is something important in the notations, which we are going to talk about first. There are three main types of notation that we do in class. Orbital notation, electron configuration notation, and noble gas notation. Now, orbital notation is where we actually just write out the orbital notation. We put 1s, put the value here, and we draw in all of the spins, all of the individual electrons. This one gives you the most information. It gives you the spin, and it shows you all the sublevels that are possibly filled. Electron configuration notation takes that and simplifies it slightly. You know you have the 1s sublevel. It's filled with 2. And here, in this case, you only have the 2s sublevel. That's also filled with 2. But just for kicks, let's go ahead and do it the way that I filled it out in the diagram with a 2p4. Basically, it's the way of simplifying this by taking the spin out. This is the most common form that we use in class, is the electron configuration notation, because these can be strung out very, very, very long, going up into the d's and the s's and the f's. And this is where we need to talk about Aufbau's principle, which tells you what order to put these in. Because they don't just go in ascending number and letter order. They follow this specific diagram. Where you have all of your s's here in a row. We'll go down to five. Now, in order to fill it out, it goes in a very, very specific direction. It goes down in this direction. So as you can see, the first couple make sense. So it would go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, but then it would go 3p, 4s, because the 4s is at a lower energy state than the 3d orbital actually is. So in order to do this, you just keep following it in this pattern, where you go 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, and so forth down the diagram, in order to tell you what order you need them to be in, depending on how far, how many sublevels are filled, how many of each filling. Now, noble gas notation tries to simplify this even further. For this specific example, we're going to use argon, because that's one that's most common. And argon's notation in the... Um, electron configuration notation has 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p, because noble gas is in on the p, which we'll talk about in a later episode. And then you put all of the sublevels that come after it that aren't explained. In this case, let's just put 4s1. But this takes the place of most of these and leaves you with only a couple of these to string out afterwards. You can use whatever noble gas fills out the most without filling out all of them. You have to be able to list something here. And if you have a noble gas like argon, you have to actually pick the one before it, which would be neon, and fill out everything that comes after it. Now this was a very complicated lesson, but I also missed some of this one. So I'm sorry if I missed anything or forgot something, feel free to let me know so I can correct it and add on to this video if I have to. But, as far as I know, this should conclude episode 6 of Chemistry in 15 minutes or less. Feel free to leave questions or suggestions in the comments below, and be sure to follow the in-video links, check out the playlist, or head over to my channel for more videos on Chemistry Review. As always, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you have a great day.